Guys, it's time for math with the fat man. Hi, Jerry. I'm going to be a math guy. Really? Uh huh. Okay. Can musicians it's not like, really be math guys? Uh, yeah, yeah. Music and math are the same thing. Haven't you ever heard that? Oh, really? People say that. I never really know what to think of it. But uh, music and math are very highly related. And I think uh, you've also got your couple of different kinds of mathematicians, just like you've got your couple of different kinds of musicians. You got your really technical guys, you got your really intuitive guys. And an, and there's uh, an intuitive mathematician is really something beautiful to behold. And I will try to demonstrate some of that. Uh, not just because I'm not because I'm good at it, but because I'm really not that good at the number crunch. So ladies and gentlemen, I love me some conic sections. And let me tell you right now what the conic sections are and what it means to be a conic section. These are the conic sections. This is a cone, all right? See the cone? And it can be cut into cross sections. If you cut it straight across, it's a circle. If you cut it at an angle, it's an ellipse. Ion thinks that you have to cut a tube across to be an ellipse, but if you give it all the thought that you can, you'll see that, yeah, counterintuitively, it seems like these would be different angles, that there would be different radii, and that it wouldn't be symmetrical. But it is symmetrical. It does make a perfect ellipse when you cut a cone like that. Uh, you can also cut it in, uh, you can cut it to make a parabola or a hyperbola. And let me show you in a little bit more detail uh, what those look like. So one thing that's very cool is you can make all these different shapes from a cone. The other thing that's cool is the special physical properties of what happens when you have one of those shapes. Before I get to that, let me show you the, uh, the uh, degenerate conic sections. A cone is actually not just this. It's a double cone. See? It, it's a little uppy and a little downy. And a line is a degenerate conic section. It's not one of the normal ones, but if you just barely graze the edge of the cone on either side, you get a line. If you go straight down the middle of the cone, you get an X. I just like that they're degenerate, that's all. And, and there are two intersecting lines, and if you go right through the middle, you get a point. So those are kind of the lesser known special cases. Um, and now, the fun part about circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas. If you build, a lot of people know this about, about parabolas. If you actually build a parabola, it has this really interesting uh, reflective property, which is that any noise you make in the middle will, will reflect off the parabola and shine and, and be projected straight out. No matter where it hits, it goes straight out. The reason for that is that the mathematical definition of a parabola is the locus of all points, that just means the thing that, that satisfies these conditions, that so the thing it's the thing, the locus of all points, that are equidistant between a line and a point. So that distance equals that distance, that distance equals that distance, that distance equals that distance. And when you build a shape that way, it also has the property of, of, of being, uh, of reflecting off in the same direction that this does. In other words, this little angle, get me a pen. If you draw something continuous like that, this angle is going to equal that angle, which means that the, that the reflective angle is going to be the opposite of this angle, which is going to be the same as this angle. Anyway, it's going to go straight up. Forget the math. Look at it. It's going to go straight. So you make a noise in the middle of your parabola, 
and it shines off like that. You shine a light in the middle of your shiny parabola and your light beam goes straight out and that is the wonderful parabola. So you will find radar dishes and uh, spy earphones and all kinds of things shaped like parabolas. Also famous is the ellipse. The ellipse is the locus of all points that are equidistant between two points. Oh, sorry, no, 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 no. The locus of all points whose uh, who's sum of the distance from both points always equals a constant. So basically, if you tie a string to a thumbtack here and a thumbtack here, and then you stick a pencil in the loop and drag it around, you'll get a nice ellipse. And that has the property of always reflecting this angle always equals this angle. And that means that if you stand here and shout in an ellipse, you'll be heard very clearly over there in the ellipse, spookily clearly. Find yourself an elliptical room and try it out. And finally, and most mystical to me, is the hyperbola. Now, a hyperbola hangs around in pairs. There's always two of them. There's always a fronty one and a backy one. Um, but it is defined as the locus of all points whose um, the, <laughs> the locus of all points whose distance from each of the, f the focal points, the, the difference between those distances is always a constant. So in other words, if you add an inch to this piece of string and an inch to this piece of string, you can go out to here. You add another inch to both pieces of string, it goes out to here. And the interesting property of this, I, had, I was never taught this, I, I had to stare at it and figure it out. But the interesting property of this is that if you stuck a little man in a giant reflector that was shaped like a hyperbola, if you stuck a little guy there and look at it from this side, he will look like he's over here. Isn't that awesome? And uh, those are just things to know about conic sections. So they got three things going for them. One, they can be made from a cone by just slicing it. Two, they've got these weird definitions where you have a point and a line or two points and you say, okay, let's say we add the distances together and make it a constant. And you do it and it makes a beautiful shape. And the third thing is if you build these things, they reflect in crazy ways. And that is the magic of a cone. Kind of makes you hungry, doesn't it? Joey, do you have any questions? Yeah, how can we prototype this so I can see this person being projected somewhere else? I mean, I, I saw a lot of lines there, my eyes were glazing over, but, you know, I'd like to be projected somewhere else. Can we do that somehow? Yes, we can. One of the most famous ways uh, in which that property is used is when you go into a gift shop in a science store and you see a little thing that looks like a flying saucer and it looks like it's got a a ring or a penny sitting on top of it, but it's actually an optical illusion, that's using hyperbolic mirrors. Another thing is, if you look into a spoon, a lot of times you'll see a dude way down at the, you know, off into the distance behind the spoon. But uh, other than that, I don't know an easy way to prototype it, Jerry. Um, we should look into that. Um, and not just for light, but for sound. Um, and I have sound a feeling. Would be really, really cool. Yes, and I have a feeling, Jerry, that the hyperbola and this funny little property is going to come in very handy to know once we get into detailed analysis of holograms. So, in the future, I will explain more carefully the properties of the hyperbola as far as reflecting, and I bet it's going to tie in with how a hologram works. We'll leave that to a future lesson.